Okay, this lecture is going to cover <clears throat> a couple of additional single free body diagram methods, in particular the log spiral method and the Swedish circle method. I'll say up front, neither of these methods is commonly used. You won't have to do any of these calculations as part of this class, but I think it's important to go through it uh, just because the log spiral method in particular has some, some pretty interesting features that come from soil mechanics. So let's dig into that. We'll do the log spiral method first. So a log spiral is one where um, basically you have a center of the spiral here, and maybe there's some radius that's associated with some position in space, like the head of the slope. And then as you measure an angle from that line, this, the spiral grows, so the radius will increase. <clears throat> if you were to keep spinning it around, you would get a spiral that just keeps getting bigger and bigger, like the shell of a snail. Uh, and it's given by this equation right here. R is equal to R0 theta times tangent of phi sub D. And in this case, uh, phi sub D is the mobilized friction angle and it's shown right there. Uh, okay, now let's take a look at some of the equilibrium conditions from this spiral. So we have a normal stress and a shear stress acting on uh, each spot on this circle. One of the interesting aspects of the log spiral is that, uh, well, first the shear stress is divided into two components, right? You have the sigma times tangent of phi d, and then you have a cd term. And uh, these mobilized angles can be computed if you know the strength and the factor of safety. <clears throat> the tangent of phi d is equal to tangent of phi over f, and then c sub d is just equal to c over f, where phi and c are the more Coulomb strength parameters. All right, now the interesting <clears throat> um, feature of a log spiral is that the resultant of sigma and sigma tangent of phi goes through the center of the circle. So at every point along this log spiral arc, the normal stress and the shear stress component arising from the friction component go through the center of the circle. So once we've defined the geometry of the circle, the sigma and the sigma tangent phi sub d terms go through the center and we can do moment equilibrium about the center and not even worry about them. We don't include them because they don't contribute to that moment. So what we're left with is a calculation of just figuring out the resisting moment contributed by c sub d over that arc length. So the way we would do that is to integrate up c sub d times this distance r and we would integrate it over that arc length right there, and that would give us the resisting moment. Then the driving moment is just solved by finding the weight of this um, sliding mass and the centroid of the sliding mass, and that, that has a distance A from the center of the spiral. And so uh, we can get the factor of safety um, based on equilibrium. Now one of the problems is that getting W and A is really pretty complicated. Right? We have a slope that's easiest to define in Cartesian coordinate systems, like x, y, or x, z coordinates. And then we have the spiral that's easiest to define in polar coordinates. And so we'd have to do this kind of complicated math problem of finding the intersection of these lines in Cartesian with polar coordinates, and then find the centroid by integrating that area times the distance, you know, the centroid of, of the region. It can be a little complicated, the way we usually handle it actually is to divide it into slices and just find the centroid and weight of each slice. So if we're going to do that, we might as well just use the method of slices itself. So that's the reason why we don't tend to use the um, log spiral method anymore. It's kind of just a lot of work to find these centroids and weights. All right, now let's take a look at what happens if we have phi equals zero. So phi sub d would be equal to zero. And we end up with um, something that would be, um, you know, up here. If phi is equal to zero, then you just get r is equal to r zero. That's the equation of a circle, and it reduces to the Swedish circle method. So the Swedish circle method is actually a subset of the log spiral method for phi equals zero. And the arc length is now just a circle with a constant radius instead of being a log spiral. So for this one, we will actually go through and formulate the equation for the factor of safety. Phi is equal to zero, so C sub D, or tau, 
the resisting um, shear stress is just equal to cohesion divided by F or undrained strength divided by F. Uh, and so we can do moment equilibrium about this center, O. Uh, and the driving moment is equal to minus W times A. Notice I have a sign convention up here for moment, that counterclockwise moments are positive. So W times A is, counter, is a uh, clockwise moment, so it's negative. And then the uh, other moment is equal to the mobilized uh, shear stress times the arc length. So you're integrating over this arc length to get a force times the moment arm or the distance, which is R for all um, points on the circle. Uh, C sub D is equal to C over F. So now you can note that by equilibrium, MD plus MR has to be equal to zero. So you get minus WA plus C over F L times R is equal to zero. And if you solve for the factor of safety, you get C L R over WA. So all you have to do now is compute that arc length test out a particular, well, first you pick a circle with a radius and a center, then you compute the arc length, you compute the weight of that sliding mass and the centroid to it, and then you can directly calculate the factor of safety. Once again, computing W and A can be tricky. So we often subdivide into slices just for the purpose of computing those things. Once we do that, we might as well just use the method of slices, even though the method of slices will give us the exact same solution in this case, as the Swedish circle method. Okay, and then for layered systems, it's pretty easy to handle this. You just subdivide the circle into uh, regions and you do a summation over the cohesion and the sub um, arc length for each of those little regions. So you might wanna do this if you have a layered system where the, the circle is going through multiple layers or maybe if the undrained strength is varying more continuously with depth within a single layer, this could be a good way to handle that problem. And then for both the Swedish circle and the log spiral methods, you still have to iterate over t trial surfaces until you get the minimum factor of safety. Sometimes we can make a pretty good guess about what that critical circle is going to be but usually we have to test out a few of them. And so you can already see it's difficult to find W and A. Uh, and now we're going to have to repeat it a bunch of times. It seems like a task that's well suited for a computer program. And that's what we do with the method of slices. Okay, finally, if C is equal to zero, you shouldn't use the Swedish circle or log spiral methods. If you did, what you would find is that as you increase the radius of the circle, the factor of safety drops. So every time you make the radius a little bit bigger, the factor of safety will get a little bit lower and you'll have to continue that process until the radius reaches infinity, at which time you will find the correct answer. Uh, of course, a radius of infinity is not something that can even be solved. So uh, you should just know ahead of time you should use an infinite slope analysis. So an infinite radius would be where this blue line is actually coincident with the slope, right? It's not, I drew it a little bit separated here, but in reality, they would be right on top of each other, and um, you should just use the infinite slope analysis. So uh, always remember that if you have C equals zero, as shown here, you shouldn't even use a computer program. You shouldn't use Swedish circle or log spiral, just do infinite slope calculation. If you do use the computer program, what you'll find is that usually you, you do what's called a grid search, and that's where you have some kind of a square or rectangular region and you say the center of the circle has to be somewhere within that grid and then it'll do 5,000 calculations or whatever and give you the minimum factor of safety. Let me draw my grid again. I know it's going to disappear. But what you'll find is that the critical point is right on the boundary of the grid and anytime you have the critical point on the boundary of the grid, what that means is you have to move the grid and try again because you want the critical point to be within your grid. And so you'll have to keep moving your grid up and to the left in this case until eventually you would get to infinity and you would get the right answer that you would get from an infinite slope analysis.